Okay, thank you, Carlos, and also thanks to the organizers for inviting me. It's a pity. I love to be in, in, uh, giving a talk here in ICTS, but it is a pity that we couldn't be in Bangalore. I spent uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks, three years ago, and I had a very good time. So thank you. Yeah, and as Carlos said, this is a topic that we started. The main collaborators are uh, Massimiliano Esposito and Felipe Barra, which is something that we started uh, with uh, them. And also with uh, Sam uh, Jacob, who is a student, PhD student in Massimiliano's group. And as Carlos said, this is a, a work that we started like uh, three or four years ago. And the main idea is that uh, we were interested in something called collisional reservoirs or repeated interaction reservoirs. I will take both terms as synony uh, synonyms. But um, the idea is that when you want to uh, uh, see, um, I mean, when you want to uh, analyze the behavior of a system in contact with a thermal bath, one possibility is that the system interacts with very small units uh, drawn from, from the bath at equilibrium. And, and this is repeated uh, uh, um, just one by one unit is the interaction. And um, this is uh, nice because you can, uh, you can, the evolution of the system will be a map, a quantum map. We are talking about quantum systems, but it has some problems that I, I will um, uh, address at the beginning of the talk. So we, we try to solve these problems. And one of the main um, ideas was to, uh, reproduce this situation in a full quantum uh, um, formalism. Yeah. So, uh, and then the problem become a collision problem, a scattering problem. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, uh, there is some uh, noise coming or some. Uh, Carlos? Uh, yes, uh, please. Uh the participants, if you can be sure, ensure that your microphones are mute, uh, so. Okay, so, well, this is the main idea. And, uh, and uh, so let me start with, um, and, and I, I have to, uh, I, to say also that uh, exploring this system, we also uh, face with, um, fundamental questions like what is heat and 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 what is work and this will appear in the in the in, in the talk and also uh, we will we will see also that that uh, the way particle duality appears at some point in 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 analyzing this problem so let me start by concept by explaining uh, the repeated interaction scheme for a system interacting with a thermal bath. The idea is that mm, the, there is a, uh, the bath provides us with a small units. So maybe this is a qubit and the units are also qubits. So it is very easy to calculate the interaction. There is an interaction term between the units and the system. And then, uh, as I said, the evolution, if, if we have, if, suppose that we have pure states. This is the state of the unit, which comes from here. The unit has some internal states, and this is the, the, the state of the system. And after the interaction, the interaction lasts uh, some time tall. After the interaction, the, the system and the units uh, change, and they eventually they become entangled. So uh, you can trace out the, the unit, and then you get an evolution for the system. In general, this will happen for uh, uh, mixed states for density matrices. So you have a density matrices before the collision and a density matrix after the collision, and they are related by a map. And the map is given by this unitary evolution uh, for a given time tau. And this time tau is the interaction time. And um, this is equivalent to have uh, uh, a time-dependent Hamiltonian. So you have the free, I mean, this is HU is the, the, the um, Hamiltonian of the unit. You have the Hamiltonian of the system and you have some interaction and the interaction is switched on and off for a time tau. 
So, um, and this is the idea of the repeated interaction scheme. What is the problem? The problem is that when you switch on and off, when you have a time dependent Hamiltonian, or in this case, when you switch on and off a Hamiltonian, you introduce energy into the system. So uh, more precisely, when, when, when JT is switched from zero to one, let's say, then you introduce a system into the system, you introduce an energy into the system, which is given by this, the average energy of this term. And when you switch off the Hamilton, the, the interaction, then there is a work, in this case is minus this, uh, this, this average value because before switching off, you have this term, and after switching off, you don't have this term. So it is the difference of the Hamiltonian of the, of the energy before and after the, the, the switching. This usually is zero because uh, the, the, uh, the initial state, initially uh, the unit and the system are uh, disentangled. And usually the interaction is zero, the average of the interaction is zero in the system, in the unit, sorry. But this is not zero, this is entangled. So um, by performing this innocent scheme of mm, interacting with, uh, with, uh, with units of a thermal bath, you introduce a work. And this work prevents the system to thermalize. So even if, even if the units are in thermal equilibrium, and the system is does not thermalize in general. And this is a problem because then these repeated interaction schemes cannot act as a thermostats. They are, uh, they, they, they are a kind of, 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 they are useful for open quantum system theory, but they are not really uh, thermostats. So when uh, we started to think, why this is not the thermostat? I mean, if, 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 this, comes from a, if this comes from a thermal bath, the system should thermalize in this interaction. So the first idea is, was very naive. We thought that just by randomizing this time, so it's true that when, when, when units come from a, from, a thermal, from a thermal bath, the velocity is random. So we thought that just by, by mm, setting the time, the interaction time as the length of the scatter of the system, divided by the velocity and, and, and setting the velocity as random, distributed as a max, uh, um, according to a Maxwellian distribution, we could uh, uh, induce thermalization in the system. And this was, uh, this was not uh, true, but this, this also uh, uh, prompted, uh, prompted an, an interesting question that it is that uh, what what I've called here work because yeah when you when you change a parameter in a Hamiltonian the energy that you introduce is usual is, is work but uh, here uh, we also started to think that if you change the way you introduce the energy for instance if you randomize this time what it is work becomes heat because now it's energy that comes from a thermal bath from a bath from a system in equilibrium so this was this this was interesting how to by changing the dynamics of a system uh, uh, you can let's say you can i mean you, you you convert work into heat or you can interpret the exchange some exchange of energy as heat but if you change the dynamics then it's work so this was a very interesting aspect of the distinction between heat and work so we, 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 we thought that this would work, but didn't work. So um, first, it doesn't work because, um, and this, is, this was the first thing that uh, actually I had discussions with Carlos about this, because the velocity of that the system um, sees, I mean, the system is, is, is fixed in some, in some location. And when you have a, a, a fixed observer, the distribution of velocities that a fixed observer sees is not the Maxwellian, but it is the effusion distribution. This was the first point. So this is why it didn't, it didn't work, but it didn't work for another reason, which is that the way we have to uh, model the interaction between the system and the, and the unit, which must, be, must obey micro reversibility. So this was the first thing that we learned. And, and then, 
we had to go to the full quantum system or the full quantum model. And what is the full quantum model is assuming that the units are particles, so they have a position and a velocity and they are quantum particles. So there is a position um, operator and a momentum operator and uh, replace this time dependent Hamiltonian by some completely autonomous Hamiltonian where the interaction occurs in some region V is going to be just a, a, a function located in a, in a, in a region. And um, by doing so, you get a completely autonomous system. So now we have a complete autonomous system where you have a bath and the bath, well, it's not completely autonomous in the sense that each time we, we have to draw a unit from the bath and, 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 and let's say we have to, uh, um, um, throw this unit to the system, but the interaction is fully is fully autonomous. So this is a scattering problem. So we have to go to a scattering theory. And in a scattering theory, you have like two flavors of a scattering theory. In particle physics, they prefer to see a scattering as uh, wave packets interacting with some system, which is the typical collision that you see in a particle accelerator or so on. In, in condensed matter and in transport, uh, people is more used to uh, have, uh, to consider uh, a scattering of plane waves. So, uh, and plane waves can be interpreted as a stream of particles. So we had these two possibilities. Actually, we had a, a big fight on that because um, we were not sure how to, if, if, if we should, which model um, analyze in detail? Well, the continuous time model has been already studied by many people, Hornberger, Filippo, and uh, they consider even the, the system inside a box with an ideal gas. So there are very nice work on that. The problem with, uh, with uh, a stream of particles uh, represented by a plane wave is that, um, you don't have a single event. You don't have a single collision. You have some continuous time. You have some rate of change in the system. So you can go to the Limblad equation, but you don't have a CPTP map, which is the thing that we wanted to have because we wanted to relate this with the very nice repeated interaction scheme where you have the system interacts with a unit, change, and so on and so on. To have that, to have a, a, a single event, localized event, you need a, a, a isolated collision, and then you need a kind of particle, a, a wave packet. So then you, we have to consider wave packets interacting and we solve the whole problem of collision. I will not give the details, just the, 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 the main ideas, but we found something very interesting, which can be illustrated with a very simple example. Uh, and it, one... Sorry to interrupt, but I can see a question in the audience. Do you mind? Uh, yep. If it's from Arshak Purkayasha. Purkayasha. Sure. So, mm, hello. Yeah. Yes, please. Hi. Uh, no, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, in the in the usual uh, repeated interaction models, also, right? I mean, one can also get the global Lindblad equation, which would actually give thermalization so uh, ah, yeah, yeah yeah of course there are some uh well there are some what do you well which paper do you refer to uh so this is a recent uh, paper by uh marco cataneo and other people uh, yeah i think this is um so uh, Yeah, yeah, but this is this is formal. Yeah, with um, with CPTP maps, you can do whatever you like. So it's true that uh, it, it, there is this paper by Cataneo, no, yeah. where uh, they prove that Limbladian dynamics can be essentially. I mean, from a map, you can get any Limblad equation that you like. So if you if you think I like to have a Limblad equation that thermalizes with detailed balance and so on, I know which map. Well, this is very recent, no? This is last year. Yeah. 
but uh, but I know this. So so yeah, with limbic with repeated interaction, you can induce thermalization. This is a uh, thank you uh, for the because uh, what I mean is that for the naive uh, the naive um, uh, the naive um, uh, in, uh, repeated interaction, which is this one. I mean the yeah. the one that is induced by the physics. Uh, then you don't get thermalization because of the work. But it's yeah, true that well, the Scataneo uh, paper also I, uh, allows one to, to create a CPTP maps which induce thermalization. But the physics is not clear. I mean, there, there is a mathematical result. Yeah, so that, that is another thing is, are you just, uh, so if you don't have, so usual repeated interaction models have just one units coming in, like one oscillator or one qubit or something like that. Now, if you don't have just one unit coming in, if you have like, like a bunch of units also, and your uh, this collisional time is not too small, then also you can go to a thermal state almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is another paper by... Yeah, so that paper is uh, by me. Uh, yeah, by... Um... That's by me. By you, no? This is... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So thank you for the, uh, it's a, uh, I wanted only to give the main ideas, but it's true that there are a lot of, uh, so these two works are, uh, uh, they um, show how to get uh, thermalization from CPTP maps. But I would say, I don't know if you agree that they are kind of mathematical, that you are not trying to model the physical situation. Uh, okay. No, they are actually, so I mean, that's an ongoing work, but I think, I mean, this, the, at least the one that I made is definitely, I mean, you can think well, of Well, your, your paper, no, your paper is not mathematical. Your paper is physics, but it's, I mean, has a very strong physical meaning, but it, the units are the bath. So the units are macroscopic in this sense, no? Uh, no, I mean, okay. I mean, okay, we can discuss maybe later. I'll okay. send you some. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we, we were here. Yeah, I wanted to show you uh, that when you consider um, packets, wave packets, so particles, uh, there, there is a very interesting uh, physics which can be illustrated by this simple example. So suppose that the system is a qubit and with a level of space in epsilon. And what it, I, I'm going to show you that it is very important the dispersion of the packet in the momentum representation. So uh, suppose that you have a Gaussian packet, which is a packet in position representation, but it's also a packet in momentum representation with some width delta p. And suppose that this uh, packet interacts with a qubit, and suppose that the qubit is in the ground state. So you have two possibilities. One possibility is that the, is the, the uh, elastic collision, that the packet mm, uh, uh, crosses the system and uh, the system does not change, and the packet doesn't change uh, the I mean so so much you know um, the other possibility is that uh, the system ex becomes excited because of the interaction but then in this case the conservation of energy implies that the kinetic energy and this is the nice thing that this is the the energy that that uh, was um, the switching on and off the potential but now, is the kinetic energy with switching on and off is the, 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 the spatial motion of the particle which is showing is switching on and off. So it's, it's, it is the kinetic energy of the particle, which the one that it is transfer between the system and the unit. So now the unit uh, slows down a bit. So now the new momentum or the new packet or the outgoing packet is centered in this in this uh, point. So if uh, the the you can represent this as a, as a, um, uh, a quantum state. There is some amplitude for the first possibility and uh, some amplitude t zero one for the ex excitation. And p here means a wave packet center at p, and this is a wave packet center at p squared minus two m epsilon. Uh, if we now trace out the unit, well, it's, this is a very simple operation. You make this and then you make the trace. And uh, what you have is the scalar, uh, the norm of P, which is one times T zero square. This is in the basis zero one of the qubit. 
And this is the outgoing state of the qubit. Eh? Once you trace the bar, you trace the unit. And then you have here T01 square, the two amplitudes, the square amplitudes. But you have off diagonal terms as well. And this of diagonal terms is this alpha is the scalar product of the two outgoing wave packets. So if there is an overlap between the packets, you can create coherences. So, and of course, these coherences prevent the system to thermalize. So you have a first reason why the system uh, maybe does not thermalize or does not thermalize. The first one is because if the packets are, are, are not narrow enough in the, in the momentum representation, then you will get coherences, even in the, I mean, in coherences in the mass basis of the, of the qubit in this case. So uh, a, a first condition for the thermalization is that packets must be narrow. This is the condition. Uh, sorry, the condition would be this is for a broad packet. So there is an overlap if delta p is bigger than the distance between these two guys, between these two word packets. So if, if the width of the packets is bigger than the distance. And, but, and this is a very this is a very problematic condition because um, it it depends on epsilon. So it, it is, is the 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 the, uh, the definition of broad or narrow packet. It does not depend only on delta p, but depends on also on the level spacing of the system. So, so you have a system, a complicated system, like a chain of spins with a weak interaction. And the, you know that the levels can be very close to each other. So um, it is a kind of problem that um, if, if, I, if I reduce epsilon here, what it was a narrow packet now becomes a broad packet because broad narrow depends on this epsilon. Okay, these are simulations. You can find all this in this, in this uh, paper. In P, it's published last year in PRX Quantum. And um, here you have, for instance, the same system, the same interaction, everything is equal. But we will bar the system with wave packets, in this case with uh, narrow wave packets, and here with broad packets. But the, the rest of parameters, we only change delta p, the, the, the dispersion. The system is a qubit, so we can use the block sphere to represent it. The interaction is here delta, but uh, these are details which are not really very important. And, uh, and you see that uh, for a narrow wave packet, even with this initial condition, the system goes to, in this case, to uh, infinite temperature, to the identity. And here, it, it goes to some co state which exhibits coherences in the qubit basis. OK, so this was the first uh, finding. And, uh, and I think it's interesting that um, to have thermalization, you need narrow packets, and that broad packets can induce coherences. So um, let's go now to the. This this is also important by itself, but let's go to the um, uh, original uh, uh, goal of our research was the conditions for thermalization. So we we found that um, uh, we found that. For this system to thermalize, you have to bombard it with uh, incoming units, which may, they must be narrow packets. And, and of course, if they come from a, from a gas in equilibrium, they have to be, uh, the velocity is random. So the velocity must be distributed or the momentum must be distributed according to the efficient distribution. Mm -hmm. so we, have, we have these two conditions. One, can I ask a question? Yep. Uh, so in the previous slide, you said the for, with narrow packets it uh, thermalizes. Uh, so when there is no coherence, so when it thermalizes, uh, what be, uh, decides the temperature? Is it a give becomes a give state? The thermal state. Yeah, 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 a give state. And what is the what decides the temperature? Well, uh, sorry, this is not. This is not um, this experiment. Well, I mean, this experiment, this simulation. We did this simulation just to prove incoherences. So it is not. Um, 
here uh, here we bombard with narrow narrow packets, but not not uh, following any Maxwell uh, fusion distribution. It's in the next slide when we check. Uh, sorry, I, I mentioned this infinite. This just uh, this just is this simulation is just the qubit. We bombard it with wave packets. I think it's with the with p zero equal ten, so with a fixed velocity. But they are narrow. In the case of the blue, the, in the case of the blue. Um, is 0.2 the dispersion in some units, and here is is 100 times uh, larger the dispersion of the momentum. So, just a follow up question. So, you mentioned that uh, for the narrow uh, uh, wave packet case, uh, it goes to an infinite temperature. So, is that expected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... yeah I was, I was uh, mis. This was. I, a mis I see. I see. I see. Was, I see. I, I saw that it. I, I saw in the picture that goes to the identity, and I said that. I see. But no problem. It's not really thermal. We check thermalization in a, in, a, in the next slide. Okay. Thank you. It was. It was this is. So this this these pictures are taken from this paper, and in this figure we just wanted to show that uh, the difference between narrow and broad packets in what respect to um, coherences. But yeah, let's go to thermalization. In thermalization, you need the narrow packets, you need the fusion distribution, but you need something else, which is also something that you need to thermalize even in the classical regime, which is microreversibility. Microreversibility means that any event in one, if you reverse the event, you have the same probability, or in or in the case of in quantum mechanics, the same amplitude. Well, the amplitude, the amplitude maybe can be com, uh, conjugated, but um, anyway, the same the same probability for a for a for a transition and for the uh, opposite transition, and uh, this means that the my, the the scattering matrix must be um, symmetric, must be symmetric. Yeah, the amplitudes must be equal, not conjugated. This is uh, the details are in the papers that I will give show you at the at the end of the talk. So if, if you revert the, the incoming and the outgoing states, then uh, if you need this, this symmetry. So, uh, and here is a, 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 a and, but you need, uh, this is important because you need, and, and in the next slides, I'm going to talk a little bit more about these two conditions. First, the fusion, which was kind of, uh, surprising, we thought that Maxwellian could do the work, but you need a fusion. So here, for instance, there is a completely artificial system of uh, five dimensions and um, this is spectrum. And we have an interaction. And then we bombard now, yeah, now we bombard with the fusion distribution and with a given temperature. And then uh, we check the populations of the system in the eigenbasis of the Hamiltonian. And then we, these are the density matrix, the populations, you know, the, the diagonal terms in the density matrix. And we compute this quantity, which if the system is gives a state, it should be the temperature. Is the log of the ratio divided by the difference. This should be the temperature. And we compute this for different pairs, not all because it will be a mess, but for different pairs of states. And this is the result if you use the fusion distribution. So if you bombard the system with particles, which uh, whose velocity is the fusion is uh, random according to the, 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 the fusion distribution. And this is with the Maxwell Boltzmann, just to check that with the Maxwell Boltzmann. So you need a, you have to randomize the velocities, but in a very specific way. This is also interesting that you get you get uh, thermalization only if uh, if if the uh, velocity distribution is, is is the fusion one and not another one, and this is what makes the work the switching on and off because the energetics of the system is at the at the end is very similar to the switching on and off, so uh, the system can lose energy can be excited and and gain energy from the unit or 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 transfer energy to the unit, 
And the interesting thing is that if these conditions are fulfilled, then the exchange, the energy exchange between the system and the unit is, um, is, is heat, is, is, is energy that, that can be considered as heat. Let me, um, in, uh, in, a, in a more recent paper, we, we came back to these uh, three conditions because we wanted to relate this more with the, with the um, typical repeated interaction schemes. And also, uh, this, this was nice because I'm going to talk now about the second condition that the, that the system must obey this micro reversibility condition, which in physical terms has a very simple meaning. It's just that if you have a, a kind of tra trajectory or transition, the the probability of the reverse one must be equal so um this is in a paper that uh, was has been accepted to uh, neural physics in this paper we have also jorge tabanera from a phd student in my university in my group who i mean Ines Luque, who are also collaborating with us in this in this paper and um uh, so what we did in this paper is to relate the scattering matrix with something very similar to the repeated interaction scheme. Remember what, what was the repeated interaction scheme? This was, uh, I just switch on and off for a given time. So I get a unitary evolution uh, with the total Hamiltonian for a given time. We found that uh, these, at, in some approximation, can be uh, replaced by, I mean, can be uh, um, expressed as a unitary evolution for a given time. So there are some approximations which are not completely clear. But the interesting thing is the following, that this tau is a function of the total energy. So this is, a, this is a kind of a strange object because it is an operator, but it depends on the energy of the, of the vector that it is applied to. And this is crucial because this is what allows one to have micro reversibility. If the only way that you have micro reversibility is that this symmetry, but for a, for a given energy, I mean that the, the, the density, the, the, um, the scattering matrix must depend on the total energy and not, and, and so when, when you make this approximation, the time, the interaction time depends on the total energy, not only on the energy of the outgoing packet. Remember that the naive idea was to replace the interaction time by the length divided by velocity of the unit, the velocity of the unit. But if you do so, when you have a, 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 a kind of a, a, an event, for instance, this guy comes with a velocity and it goes out with a velocity V prime, then micro reversibility means that the, the reverse transition is that it comes with V prime and it goes out with V. I don't know if it is uh, clear. So whenever you have an inelastic collision, Micro reversibility implies that the time must depend on the total energy and not just on the energy of the unit, which was our first naive assumption. So, and, and in this plot, we have a qubit. This is in this paper. You can see the details in this paper. We have a qubit and we bombard the qubit with units. The units have some internal states, uh, but, and then we apply, um, well, we have different approximation. This is the thermal, uh, this is the occupation of the um, ground state. This is the temperature of the units. And this is the line is the thermal, is the thermal population. Exact is means that we solve exactly the collision. And, and there are these two interesting uh, uh, cases, the triangles, are uh, this idea, the interaction, the we call it random interaction time uh, with a random interaction time that depends on the total energy and the system thermalizes. 
But if instead of calculating the interaction time using this formula, you just use the velocity, so you just uh, forget about the this inter, this uh, initial energy, then you get the these small blue points, which are far from equilibrium. Uh, you can even have uh, population inversion. You can even have more particles in the excited state than in the ground state. So the system, I mean, more particles, the system can have a higher probability to be in the excited state. So you see that micro, how important is micro reversibility? If you, if you just do the naive thing of saying, ah, my unit has a velocity, it crosses the system and the system has a length L. And so I replace the time by L divided by the, the velocity. Then you get, you can get even negative term. I mean, you can get population inversion. And the only way to have real thermalization is that the total time depends on the total, the time of interaction depends on the total. Energy. So you have the details as well in this paper here. So um, with this, I, I think I finish the the what we have done in these uh, last years, and and, and uh, which is this distinction between narrow and wave and broad packets and these conditions of thermalizations. But I want to finish with some with questions that we are still thinking of, and I think they are kind of open and interesting problems. And this is the uh, the the. This is this first thing of, of the, the distinction between narrow packets and, and broad packets. So we can have this situation in a laboratory. So you can have a bath in equilibrium. Actually, in, in cavity QED, you have a very similar situation. So you can have this in the laboratory. And uh, if the whole system is isolated, the system should thermalize. The system in contact with thermal bath should thermalize. Otherwise, you can you can build a perpetuum mobile of the second kind. If you have something, you have a system that for some reason doesn't thermalize with the thermal bath, then you can go to another, you can go to another normal bath and then thermalize it, and then um, you can always make a cycle that uh, creates a perpetuum mobile. So uh, Thermalization is not just uh, uh, something that one requires for a, uh, for a thermostat to be efficient, but, um, but it is, it is, it is uh, something that the second law imposes. Yeah. So uh, the, here, this situation should thermalize. But we have found that a, a necessary condition is this narrow packet. So one question is, uh, that uh, that comes out is what what comes out from a gas at thermal equilibrium. So what comes out uh, from a quantum gas in equilibrium? I have a, a, a gas in equilibrium, and uh, and I open a hole in a, in this oven, and then uh, what what comes out from here? And this is a question that uh, um, I don't know if it if we, uh, we have looked for uh, um, previous work, and 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 it's not clear. Huh? So uh, inside, uh, inside, actually, the, you can go, you can take the question even further and just ask what is inside the quantum ideal gas. This is an exercise that you can do uh, even in undergraduate students. Well, kind of smart undergraduate students. You can ask them to compare uh, the canonical state, which is this one. This H is the free P squared divided by two m, the free Hamiltonian. You have the quantum canonical ensemble. This is a mixture. This because this is the the free Hamiltonian. This is a mixture of plane waves, and this is what we teach in the undergraduate courses of statistical mechanics. But you can think well in the in a classical, this uh, semi-classical description. I could have uh, particles, quantum particles or wave packets and distribute it with the Maxwell and distribution. So I could have a mixture of wave packets instead of a mixture of plane waves. So which, which, which description is okay? Or can we go from one description to the other? Because 
okay, if I have atoms, very small atoms, like, uh, or, or, or very small molecules, hydrogen, oxygen, it could believe that they are forming, they are, each molecule is a plane wave, is a, is, 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 is a spread all over the box. But if you have fullerens or something like that, it's hard to believe that the fullerens, uh, the state of each fullerene is a, is a plane wave that occupies the whole the whole um, box. So uh, there should be a transition from here to here somehow if the molecules are more complicated or are, and uh, and um, actually if you do this exercise, which is an exercise that you can you can propose to some student, uh, you compare the two uh, density matrices in the for instance in the basis of of plane waves, and um, and you get uh, these two expressions. Here is a delta, of course, and here is there is uh, no, the overlap between the wave packets, and uh, they are. Uh, you can prove that they are equivalent if if the gas is non-degenerate. So if you have the typical uh, condition for a classical limit in statistical mechanics, this is a nice uh, exercise. But what happens? But still, uh, I mean, well, what happens inside, and what happens if you if you if you open a a, a a hole in the box, what comes out? As I said, if uh, if the molecules are very big, it's it's hard to believe that they come out as waves, and uh, and not as wave packets. Uh, I, I mean, localized wave packets. And actually, this is a, this is something that. It has been even studied experimentally. This is a very nice paper by the group of uh, Seilinger, where they is that they was this was the first the first experiment doing diffraction with big molecules. I think this was fullerens, and uh, and they found also that the 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 the, the diffraction pattern uh, fades out if the distance between the Open, let's say the whole. I mean, between the source of the fullerens and the screen increases, and this is because the 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 fullerene loses coherent. I mean, it becomes localized. It 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 becomes more a wave packet, and the reason is that it because it because it radiates uh, black body radiation because it's a very big uh, object. Um, then this radiation uh, localizes the object, or it's like a measurement. It's like a measurement that um, localizes the, the the molecule. So it is uh, this problem of what comes out from a quantum gas in equilibrium, or even what comes out and and how it comes out evolves. Like here in this experiment, I think this is a nice open question that um, uh, uh, what we have done could shed some light because it is we we have found that it is very the the, the character the wave packet the the nature of the wave packet associated to each unit it's it's crucial to for the evolution of the system so i will uh finish with this uh, just uh, um, let me give you the some conclusions and the the paper and, and, and the papers that we have uh, written uh, on this topic. So, um, or, or the main ideas, one of the main ideas that uh, that I had is be, be, even beyond this idea, be, beyond this this question of the, of the um, uh, 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 repeated interaction reservoirs or positional reservoirs. Uh, for me, one very important question is that whether you can, um, uh, identify heat and work from the dynamics. So usually in thermodynamics, we identify work because work comes from a system, from 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 something that doesn't change its entropy, and 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 heat is the exchange of energy that induces a, a, a change of entropy in the environment. So usually heat is comes from a thermal bath. And um, and work comes from an external agent that moves the parameter of the Hamiltonian. But if you only know the dynamics of the system and how the, the system uh, exchanges energy with the environment in some way, uh, 
can we, from this, the dynamics of this exchange of energy, can we um, uh, split the energy into heat and water? I think this is a very interesting question. It's even interesting for energy for problems in energy harvesting. Because in energy harvesting, you have fluctuations that are inducing energy, are, are transferring energy to your system. But it will be nice to have a tool to tell you how much of this energy can be uh, called heat and uh, how much can be called uh, work. OK, I've shown you that uh, for thermalization, you need these three conditions, narrow wave packets, efficient distribution and micro reversibility and that um, uh, the broad packets generate coherences and these prompts it's some nice questions uh, the one that I uh, mentioned at the end of the talk what comes out from a, a quantum gas in equilibrium also if we can use coherences to measure the width of a wave packet this will be maybe some interesting this is a, a kind of a, uh, complementary to Seidinger experiment where they use diffraction, but diffraction is much, or maybe in some situations is much diff more difficult. And maybe we can use our results to measure the width of a wave packet. We have to explore more uh, if uh, broad packets can induce thermalization by maybe randomizing the times of uh, rival times and things like that. Okay, and this is the paper here. Uh, uh, in this first paper, we we saw the conditions of microreversibility and the fusion. This is the general theory uh, where all the collision, the scattering problem is solved, and then we applied it to to narrow packets. We explore here narrow packets and 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 if the exchange of energy can be called heat. And also with broad packets, this is something very interesting that we I didn't mention in my talk, but with very broad packets, uh, the exchange of energy is the opposite, it's full work. So you can induce uh, unitary evolution in the system with broad packets. And this is in this uh, paper, which is uh, in, the, in the archive. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. I'm happy to see the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Juan, for that uh, talk. Um, uh, I can see one question from Anupan. So please, Anupan. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so my question is, I didn't get it completely. So the uh, question is, uh, this way of uh, thermalization uh, induced by quantum scattering, is this uh, uh, better than the usual way of thermalizing a system? Better than? Is this method uh, better than the usual way of thermalizing a system, uh, like attaching to a... Better in which sense? In which sense? I mean, the, yeah, so that's, uh, my question is, is it, uh, I mean, why would we want to do this? Why would be the... Well, uh, let me... This paper, the uh, this paper, we call it co quantum collision thermostat because our idea is to provide people with a tool uh, to uh, with with a, with a thermostat. I mean, with a tool where, where, where you have an easy thermostat, and uh, and actually the this is uh, one of the thermostat that we propose to the community. Let's say. Just uh, it's, it's, it's very simple to implement and the system thermalizes and, uh, and we checked, we have checked that the, the, this, this type of uh, I, um, uh, scattering matrix, uh, you don't have to solve the scattering problem. You just have to calculate the time and, and do this. So it is not much harder uh, than a uh, typical um, repeated interaction scheme. And, and we think that this could be nice. So, so I, I'm pretty sure that this could be efficient because so far you don't have in quantum mechanics, I thought, I don't think you have so good thermostats. You have, you have to simulate Bose, uh, bosons no? or, or quantum oscillators, or you, you have to simulate a big system to have a, a, a good thermostat, as far as I know. And here we are proposing something which is simple, 
um, and um, and I think it. I don't know what you call efficient, but it could be efficient in the sense of uh, of computational consumption. I think it could be very very efficient. Okay, so uh, I have another question. So this whole scheme where you have described is for finite dimensional Hilbert space. Uh, we need to also work for, let's say, uh, infinite dimensional Hilbert space. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you need this. Well, you need a lot of. There are some uh, assumptions you on the on the spectrum of the system. You don't. You you need to have. Uh, uh, you don't. Uh, you need to avoid uh, more degeneracy. So the levels, the level spacing cannot be equal because in this case it does not thermalize completely. Um, but uh, it could be generalized to. I think you need discrete, but this is you need a discrete uh, spectrum, but not really finite dimension. Like how Okay. Thank you. And when we have another question by, well, we have several questions. Let's start with uh, Abhishek, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and this problem of like uh, quantum uh, uh, gas in thermal equilibrium, and then you make a hole, uh, and uh, you are asking uh, what is the nature of the particles that that come out. Okay, so I guess in just formally, I mean, it's a straightforward problem, right? Like I can just evolve the system uh, with whatever Hamiltonian with the hole in a box. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, what exactly is the problem? Like, uh, and what comes out? I mean, uh, okay, like, of course, like the, at some, uh, if I close the hole at some point, I'll just have maybe one particle and it should be a wave packet. So, I mean, what exactly is the uh, problem uh, in uh, answering the this question? Yeah, yeah, you are right that, um, um, of course, one can do a very, in 1D, one can do a very simple simulation, which is you have a, a something in equilibrium, you open a hole, in this case, is just removing one of the barriers and see what is coming out. By the way, never, uh, we, we were we were thinking of doing this this uh, simulation because I think nobody has done it, it, it or I, I I've not found it, but uh, but of but the the total problem is more complicated because you have the electromagnetic field you have this effect of um, of uh, radiate radiating uh, which uh, induces some decoherence in the system so uh, it is it is uh, more complicated. And uh, Hornberger has some nice papers on on that on the on how a particle loses a spatial coherence, which essentially is becoming a wave packet. Okay. But, the, but I would say it's, it's there are still some we couldn't find a completely definite answer that uh, okay that. Uh, what is what is the, an answer to this question? I, I I would say that I've not found. Okay, so I guess you are also interested in uh, not just the unitary evolution, but also like you are actually observing it and then oh, what? Uh, I think yeah, I think it's more complicated. But even the unitary, as I said, if if somebody wants to do the simulation, I will be happy to see it because uh, it is not uh, it's something that we we have not found. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, uh, Bihai Argavala. Uh, uh, yes. Hello, hello, Karando. Thanks for this wonderful talk. So I have one question related to, to the uh, point that you made in the end um, about uh, the thermalization. So I'm just wondering if uh, we can uh, uh, make one-to-one -one connection or is the, if, if there is any one-to-one -one connection with uh, uh, the point that you're making that I we need a uh, narrow if Packet plus effusion plus uh, like anything else and fine like system with the uh, where the bath, for example, it should have a thermal distribution, it should be incoherent um, in terms of spectral density that should be broad. So I was just wondering if there is any kind of one-to-one -one correspondence that can be drawn here, like uh, <clears throat> No, you. I, I mean, uh, you mean, for instance, the the ohmic spectrum and things conditions like that. 
right, uh, and or of, or in or in or in weak coupling, no, uh, right, like right, that. right, um, right, right. Uh, yeah, not really. Here we can have well in the last paper we have that there is um, not really here. It's uh, we have discussed about this thing of the weak coupling. The coupling can be anything here because uh, you are solving this. Of course, when you go to the Lindblad equation by doing, you have to do some limits where you finally, I think you get a kind of um, of uh, weak coupling, uh, the equivalent of weak coupling. But uh, as here you need, no, it, yeah, weak coupling is not really necessary. Mm -hmm. And for the system, yeah, there is no a one-to-one -one because uh, it is very different. So this is why we also we want to apply all this to to revisit problems of the Limblad equation, like local versus global and things like that. This is what we are doing now. We are working on that. I see. And another follow-up question is, uh, if I relax, say, uh, this microreversibility condition, I'm just wondering uh, what kind of system I'm simulating. Is it like a system in presence of magnetic field? Well, with magnetic field, yeah, my, micro reversibility with magnetic field is is a different world. Of course, it is more complicated. And um, mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, when you break uh, micro reversibility, especially mm -hmm. as, except for for magnetic field and things like that, you are creating. You have a Maxwell demon. You are creating something that, that can go in one direction and okay. cannot go in the other direction. Something like mm -hmm. that. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, Maybe I have some comment about uh, in, in, in classical mechanics, we addressed some time ago uh, the same problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, there it seems that if the statistics of the velocity of the mm -hmm. particles hitting the systems is mm -hmm. equilibrium, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, a weak coupling, strong coupling doesn't really enter into, into the That's problem. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you I sort of satisfy similar conditions as, as one But I if see. the statistics of the velocities is not that of equilibrium, but an arbitrary one, mm -hmm. then I am. the system still thermalizes uh, only if the coupling is weak. It's weak. Huh? I was wondering if uh, in, in, in your case, uh, in quantum mechanics, a similar result would uh, would appear at some point or not. Uh, no, we did uh, No, we have. We should come and we can discuss this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, we, did, uh, we didn't see this. We actually, we don't know exactly how to define weak coupling and strong coupling in the CPTP map because it is, well, it's a continuous. When you go to the Limblad, it's different because then you uh, it, it uh, you have to take into account this, uh, well, yeah, in this case, you can, you can have something. The scattering matrix goes, in the in this limit goes to the identity and then um and then you can define the weak coupling but in the cptp map scheme mm -hmm. it's not okay we have another question by gonzalo manzano so please gonzalo go ahead hi can you hear me hola oh. yes hi gonzalo hi, Juan. hi thanks for the interesting talk I, I was just wondering about the, uh, when you model the collisions, uh, do you use kind of uh, elastic or inelastic collisions? Or if you have think about the, some difference there, because I, I also would expect now that if you conserve momentum in the collision it will not be exactly the same as if you don't. And uh, I was wondering how, how is the, if you yeah. thought about that. In, Okay, here uh, you don't have momentum conservation because the the, the whole system the whole system is not um, invariant and uh, uh, so the system is fixed. And then, um, in other words, the the the, the whole system, the whole setup is not invariant under translation, and then you don't have co conservation of momentum. Uh, you have conservation of energy. Here, it's not clear what it is called uh, elastic and inelastic. In, in, in scattering theory, people, they, they call this elastic when, when, when the internal degree of freedom does not get any energy. And this would be non-elastic because the, 
but uh, but but energy is conserved. This is this is I mean this is something that it is uh, energy is conserved because um, because um, the uh, okay no you for for conservation you need that the interaction uh, um, the interaction um, commutes with the total free free. So this is the this is the energy of the unit, the energy of the system. This is the interaction, and to have conservation of energy, you need that the interaction commutes with with the total. Of course, it doesn't commute with this, with the Hamiltonian of the system or the Hamiltonian of the unit, but it commutes with the total. So you have total conservation of energy under the interaction, and then, um, but not conservation of momentum. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, I don't see further questions, not in the chat. So I would like to thank uh, Juanma again, and then also Herbert Spohn for, for your night talks. And thank you. To, in, the, in this program. And uh, um, 